growing up as a child, I had always dreamed about the sea and what lied beyond the horizon. Constantly I became more and more curious as I heard of the new lands being discovered. As my curiosity grew, so did I, until finally I became a man and was able to venture off into these strange lands myself. It seems like decades ago now, when my first fleet took flight, we were bound for the horizon, never stopping to look back. In those days of being a young man, I couldn't feed my endless abyss of greed and lust. You see, it wasn't just about the journey, but also about what treasures lie there. My crew and I yearned for the mysterious treasures, and it's because of this thirst that I would become a colossal monstrosity, hankering for more and more. Through these acts, I would destroy and pillage all in the name of Apple Juice. We had set sail with our great wines and bread and sandwich meats, but nothing prepared us for the sweet nectar of these aborigines of the new world. Clashing against the hard waves, we sailed on and on for weeks or months or years or lifetimes until finally reaching the land. It seemed like forever, but we made it. Bounding to the shore, my men began to kiss the sweet sand that enveloped their feet. I do kiss the ground, for it was surely another week, or maybe a year, that my men would revolt and I would be kissing my sweet buttocks. Goodbye. Shortly after reaching the land, my slave girl who spoke Norwegian translated for me their native tongue. It seemed they were expecting us, and as time would tell, it appears they believed us to be gods, our pale white faces and strange breads. They thought it out of this world, and our guns they saw as magic shooting fire and destroying with ferocious power. The natives took delight in this because their lands were built on bloodshed and sacrifice. Each Monday they fed a man's hearty heart, hearty cow to the nectar goddess, Nicholas Cage. The chieftain was dressed in gold, head to toe, with bright green feathers jetting outward. Upon his arrival came a caravan of men who presented to each of us a sweet barrel of nectar that they called apple juice. The second of the sweet juice touched my perched lips. I realized I needed more. Thus I asked the chieftain, do you have more? And as my slave girl translated it, he began to nod. And then I asked him, where? And he explained that in the heart of the land there was a city drenched in apple juice by the name of Appleton, Minnesota. Later that night, my men had drunken ourselves dry. No apple juice remained under any stone, rock, or eagle. Rallying my men, we marched to the city of Appleton, Minnesota. In three days' time, we would make it. And there we would make our treacherous backstabbery. And there we would take the city as our own, even though they would probably give us as much apple juice as we wanted. But it wasn't just about that. They practiced pagan ideals, sacrificing a man's cow, was too far. Once we had made it to the city, we looked to it and saw a wondrous nation within it lay. Scribes and lawyers and preachers and merchants and delis and frat houses and so on. Yet we let our lust get in the way. When their emperor welcomed us into the city, we turned on him and kidnapped him in a violent attempt to take the city and its spoils. Sadly, the natives were too strong killing not only my men, but their glorious leader, too. We had to escape fast. Using the floorboards of the temple, we barricaded ourselves in, and our chest hair, we knit together several laughs, and slipped out the back, which to our luck, was a river leading out to the sea. That day, they had thought they had won. But to their surprise, we would return with a reckoning vengeance, all for the lust we had for the Sweet nectar called apple juice.